Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look in the Dungeon Master's Guide for another magic item. And uh, if you're noticing a pattern where I'm going for kind of more obscure magic items, uh, you're right. I have intentionally been picking some more obscure ones. They're the ones that have been drawing my interest lately. I've been including them in games I'm running and I thought, well, what the heck, I'll do some videos on them. But today's magic item is going to be Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments. Uh, an undersung, underrated magic item, in my opinion. And we're going to take a look at what it is, what you can do with it, how you can do better with it, and a connection to very popular uh, products that are being set up by WotC today. Uh, so I'll, I'll take a look at all that. But we're going to be taking a look at Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments out of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Subscribers, come on in. Having a lot of growth, and I want to keep the channel growing. It's slowed a little bit lately. I'd like to get it uh, going uh, again, so if there's any way you can help out, if you're watching the video and you haven't subscribed, please do. Keep the channel, channel growing. Keep me able to make these videos. Also, please take a look at the Patreon. If there's anything you can do to help out there, that would be great. I have a free poll going right now that's talking about uh, what games you'd want to see on this channel, in addition to the ones I've been, show, been featuring. I just want to expand things a little bit. Uh, right now, the front runner is Battletech, followed closely by Champions. I would need to know if there's enough interest in Champions to feature it. I had some Champions videos early in the incarnation of the channel. I did about six. They never did very well. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, please you know, go ahead and take a look at the poll. I'll attach a link below. But back to today's topic at hand, Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments from the Dungeon Master's Guide. Today on page 121. Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments. This is an interesting magic item, one I've always liked. Uh, I enjoy giving out, and uh, I have enjoyed getting it a couple of times from DMs. So we're going to take a look at the value first. What? How many experience points do you get if you get a pot of Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments? Well, let's see. Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments is 500 with three stars, and it's per pot of pigments. So 500 EXP per pot, and they come in, in usually in groups of one to four. So up to 2,000 experience points, and yes, we still award experience points for magic items in my game. And now we go to the description itself. And they're down here at the bottom of the page. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay. Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments. These magical emulsions enable their possessor to create actual objects simply by depicting their form in two dimensions. The variegated pigments are applied by a stick tipped with bristles, hair, or fur, i.e. a brush. The emulsion flows from the application to form the desired object as the wielder concentrates on the desired image. One pot of Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments is sufficient to cover a thousand cubic feet, a uh, cubic foot object, by depicting it two-dimensionally over a 100 square foot surface. Thus, a 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot pit or a 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot room, or a large door with a passage behind it, etc., can be created by application of the pigments. Note that only normal, inanimate things can be created. Doors, pits, flowers, trees, cells, etc. Not monsters, people, golems, and the like. The pigments must be applied to a surface, a floor, wall, ceiling, door, etc. From one to four pots, containers of pigments will be found, usually with a single instrument about one foot long to apply them, so one brush. It takes one turn to depict uh, objects with pigments. Objects of value depicted by pigments, precious metals, jewels, ge gems, jewelry, ivory, etc., will appear valuable, but will be tin, lead, paste, gems, brass, bone, etc. Normal armor or weapons can, of course, be created. So there's your magic item. Brings up a great number of uh, questions that we had to solve at our, our table. Uh, first off, it doesn't. It says that you can depict what you want to depict in a turn. Okay, what if I don't depict something that covers a thousand square feet? What if I just doodle up an arrow, or, or you know, ten arrows? What, do I still have the rest of the pot, or is the application used? This got tricky because there's nothing to say that opening the pot makes it go away after you use it. There's nothing to say you have to use it all in one turn. Simply that it takes a turn for you to paint the item. So we've ruled this that within reason, you can pull the, uh, the lid off the pot, take some paint. You want to make up a, a dagger for yourself, just an ordinary dagger of steel. 
you uh, paint the dagger, takes you one turn, and you still have a bunch of the paint left. You have put the pop lid back on, clean the brush, and you're good to go. You can go ahead and use it down the line. So for that use, it becomes almost infinite. You can make pretty much whatever you want. Uh, we have had players uh, use it to make uh, fine serving goblets. You just depicted the picture of fine serving goblets. I had gotten a pot of these at one point. This was years ago in a game. And I had the idea of taking it to an artist and telling the artist exactly what I wanted. In this case, I wanted a beautifully wrought sword. I wanted it to be very ornate, very detailed, very meticulous. So I had the artist actually do the painting. And the GM ruled, or DM ruled, that because an actual person trained in artwork did the painting, that when the sword became three-dimensional, it was this fine, well-balanced, beautiful sword. And I was able to then take that sword, which was real, didn't turn to paste or glue or anything like that. I then was able to take it and sell it for tremendous amounts of money. DM made it very clear to me that this was kind of a one-off thing from now on. It should be stuff that I want, not stuff I'm trying to, to whip up to sell. But that's just a little bit, uh, a couple of different ways you can use it. So the ba basic idea behind the Marvelous Pigments is from, in my opinion, Warner Brothers cartoons. The famous moment where Bugs Bunny or Wile E. Coyote paint a tunnel on a cliff face. And then whoever they're dealing with just zooms right through it. Roadrunner for Wile E. Coyote and the, the turtle for Bugs Bunny. And they're able to pass through it no problem. But then when Wiley try, Coyote tries it, he slams into the solid cliff face. I really believe that's where this came from. I've said before that Bugs Bunny was huge in the Chicagoland area uh, through the 60s, 70s, and 80s. His reruns on WGN through Ray Rayner and company, and then in, occasionally in their own package. And Gygax leaving in Chicago and then later Lake Geneva. He saw these. He's a Warner Brothers fan. I guarantee it. There's too much stuff in here that is like Warner Brothers for it not to be. So, there's a couple of ways you can use the Marvelous Pigments. Uh, I like the idea of being able to create, create a passage. If you know that there's a room next door, you can just take these out and whip up an opening in the wall and uh, paint a door, and then you open the door and you're in the other room. I've always really liked that. I think there's a lot you can do with these. Uh, you could paint a ladder, for instance, and then take the ladder and use it to climb up to another level or to use it to span a chasm in a dungeon, things like that. So this is a really good lower level magic item. And I really think there's tremendous value in it. If uh, it says you can paint plants, trees, flowers, etc., why couldn't you paint food? I would think you, they, reasonably you could paint food. The food might not taste great, but I would say is the, the DM that it would be nutritious. So there's a lot of ways you can use this and a lot of ways that are not covered here. Now, I realize there have been other, you know, four other editions of D&D &D to this point, and maybe these are covered in other ones, but I'm only going off the AD&D &D, uh, right up from the Dungeon Master's Guide. So that's some of the ideas, some of the ways we've used the Marvelous Pigments. And then I talked about a tie-in to, to a product that's out right now from WotC. And those products are... Those are Marvelous Miniatures. Here we are. Right there. Those are Marvelous Miniatures. That's where they got the name from for this line of minis. I really like these minis. They are affordable. They are pretty good castings. Uh, I, this is the Lich and Mummy Lord. Uh, personal favorites of mine. Uh, so I was really excited when Nolzers came around and was a thing. And... Uh, I've bought many of these, and I've tried painting a few, and I am not a good painter, but fortunately, my player Mike is. This is in a tin he just did for me. This is absolutely beautiful work. Mike does tremendous detail. I'm just so impressed by his work every week. He'll walk in with a bunch of different figures that I've given him over the years, and he'll say, oh, I got these done, and he'll hand me a a whole bunch of different ones. These were two that we got last night. We played Spellfire last night. And this is uh, the stuff he had painted up. This is a drider. I bought this drider probably six years ago. And never even got out of the box. Because I knew once I looked at it. I was never going to be able to paint it. To do it justice. Mike on the other hand. Had no problem with it. 
So these are both Nolzer's Marvelous miniatures. Uh, I like to think that they were painted with Nolzer's Marvelous pigments, which is pretty cool. But that is where they got the name Nolzer's from for the Nolzer's Marvelous miniatures line. So just a little bit of trivia there for you. Uh, pretty good magic item that I've always liked. I've liked giving out. Uh, I've liked receiving. I've gotten them on two different characters over the years. These are ones I've given out a number of times in my 40 plus years of DMing, but it's not a real common one for me because it just seems that this is another item that just kind of sits in the uh, on the roster of magic items and doesn't tend to get used. And I've always thought that was a shame. I do think this would be a, a magic item you could give out at lower levels. Uh, I think this could go out as early as like third or fourth level for a player group simply because they're going to be powerful and your players are going to be able to innovate with them, but they're not going to be game-changing. If you need that 50 feet of rope, you can doodle up 50 feet of rope. Now, I would also limit the number of uses of an individual pot probably to maybe 10. So you can pop the lid off, paint it up, and then put the lid back on. I'd probably allow it 10 times. And then after the 10th time, as long as it's something that he's depicting that's you know fairly small, up to the thousand square foot of paint that's in a bucket, which by the way is a lot of paint. Uh, but I would allow it to be 10 times and then I would just say after the 10th time, oh, it's dried up, the paint's no good anymore. Just my way of handling it, uh, just my recommendation. It is a way I've started doing because it was becoming Nolzer's infinite pot of paint and I didn't like that. Uh, also, I have ruled in the past that if the applicator gets gummed up or whatever, I allow you to just use an ordinary, ordinary brush with them. I've never been too hung up on that. But that's me. I can see where some DMs would disagree with me on that. So there you have it. Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. Featured today in Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments. A little bit of D&D background. A little bit of history. And a fun magic item. So that's all I've got today from page 121. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, leave some comments below. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you next time on page 121.